However, and this comes the final, the good point. So far I've given you difficulties in a sense. The old quantum gravity, perturbative quantum gravity does not work. The idea of uh, describing quantum young mill fields in the continuum in terms of loops or spin network does not work. Now if you do the same together, each one cures the difficulties of the other one. Uh, and a loop formulation of gravity or, or a young mill theory coupled to gravity uh, works in the sense that I uh, will say in, in a moment, it solves both sets of difficulties. And why? Because of diffeomorphic invariants. Here is where diffeomorphic invariants come uh, playing a role. So uh, take one of these spin network states, deform it. Now, if the theory is diffeomorphic invariant, these are a gauge equivalent description of the same thing. These two states are, are related one to another by diffeomorphism, like two metrics obtained by uh, smoothly deforming one into another represent the same physics. So the the gauge invariant states, the equivalence classes of this object under smooth deformation are abstract graphs labeled only by the graph, its knotting, and the quantum numbers. So in a sense, the smearing over the manifold is done automatically to you by gauge invariance, which takes away an enormous number of, of, of apparent degrees of freedom in the, in the, in, in the position of these, uh, these things. Now, so far what was just sort of motivation. Let me become more precise here. Now I start saying uh, sort of more, more, more precise things. So how is the series defined? We'll start with generativity or generativity plus the standard model. Um, or basically any other diffeomorphic invariant theory in which the basic variable is a connection. In, in, in generativity we use the, the Ashika formulation. You do a canonical quantization. Um, go a basis, to a basis of spinetto states of the one that I just introduced. Uh, impose diffeomorphic invariant, study the wheeler dewitt equation. These constructions give a, a separable Hilbert space of state, an algebra of operators. Um, in the Hilbert space of gauge invariant state, there is a basis which is given by these abstract graphs labeled by uh, uh, spins and intertwiners, and the <coughs> um, dynamics turn out to be uh, ultra-valid finite. Now, let me give you some, some more details. Um, how is the Hilbert space defined? <coughs> One starts by a Hilbert space of uh, non-gauge invariant states, which is constructed in terms of functionals of the connection, cylindrical functions that just depend on a finite number of holonomies of the uh, connection. And on this, there is a, hill, a, a scalar product that can be defined, which is SU2 and diffeomorphic invariant. So this Hilbert space carries a representation of diff, and if you take the quotient by the gauge group, you get a well-defined, you can show that you get a well-defined Hilbert space. Um, the operators which are well-defined there are the holonomy itself and the uh, operator conjugate to it, which is uh, uh, the, the electric field, the object conjugate to the, uh, to the connection, which is a two-form integrated on a surface. And this acts uh, uh, as a, a, a left invariant vector field on the, on, on, on the group element associated to all the, 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 the uh, lines that cut uh, the surface. Now, this representation, this is a theorem. First of all, <coughs> this Hilbert space is a representation of the Poisson algebra of those operators, um, of those classical operators, and is unique. This is a theorem, uh, 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 it's called the Loss Theorem for the name of the people who have uh, proved it, which in a sense solidifies this construction. The, the, the theory was constructed by hand, uh, sort of physicist side. Uh, the representation is unique uh, up to unitary equivalence, namely, basically, if you want to quantize the different most invariant theory in terms of these observables, this is the only thing you can do. Now, what is in this Hilbert space and these operators? Um, first result, uh, take a region of uh, space and consider the volume of this region of space. Now, the volume, of course, depends on the metric, which is a gravitational field, which is one of the fields we have, so it's going to be one of the operators in this, uh, in this, uh, uh, in this Hilbert space. And it turns out that it's a well-defined self-adjoint operator. One can study a spectral problem. The spectrum is discrete, and the eigenstates are the spin networks. And what is interesting is that the eigenvalue of the volume get contribution for all, from each of the nodes which are inside the region. So you can think at each node as a, a contribution uh, to, the, to, the, to the volume, so a, quant a quantum of volume. The same game can be played with the area. Again, the spectrum can be computed. This is a spectrum. Um, and uh, the area now gets a contribution for each link that crosses the surface, so you can think at the um, at the, each uh, link carrying a quantum of area. So this, this leads to a uh, 
description uh, of quantum space-time, which I find beautiful, uh, compelling. So these abstract graphs can be interpreted as uh, quantization of space, quantum excitation of space, where each node is, is, is a quantum of space. Uh, it's, uh, the, the graph gives the connectivity, who is next to who, the intertwine is the quantum number of the volume, and the uh, 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 spins are the quantum numbers of the area. So these are not excitation in space. Notice that this, there's no position, momentum, energy, nothing like that here. Um, these are excitation of space, okay? These don't live somewhere. These are the, the, the spaces. So this is the way in which the theory uh, construct a, a, a diffeomorphic environment, a background independent discrete quantum description of space. And the, and the discretization of space here comes here not from the graph, but from the discreteness of the eigenvalues of volume and, uh, and uh, area. So this is a cartoon uh, uh, comparison with strings, if you think a string, uh, <coughs> in both cases, both theories explore the idea that uh, 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 extended uh, one, uh, one dimensional, high dimensional uh, 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 excitations uh, define uh, quantum, the, 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 the interesting quantum field theory, but in strings you consider these things on a space time, at least in the basic definition of the theory, in, in, in uh, the loop approach you uh, consider these things are creating, building space-time themselves. Now, what about the dynamics? Now, um, first way for defining the dynamics is to, to write the Willard with equation. So this is obtained by uh, writing this operator, starting from the Hamiltonian uh, constraint of the classical theory. So this is a construction, I'm not giving you the construction, I'm giving you the result. H is a well-defined operator, and it is ultraviolet, finite, on the diffeomorphic invariant state. I'm going to give you a sketch of why this happened. Um, to define it, there's a curvature which is regulated by sort of point splitting in terms of, uh, of an allonomy, and then you have to shrink the, the, the loop uh, to zero. Now, what happens when you shrink the loop? See, this state here and this state here are the same in the diffeomorphic invariant theory. So what is ha what happening is that the limit alpha to this is just a, a, a sketch of the of, of the mathematics. But what uh, what happens is that the limit is trivial on the diffeomorphic invariant state because concretely there is no short distance in the theory. Everything exists in a sense only on the, uh, the, the, the Planck scale. So the theory is ultra-valid finite. This can be done with matter also. Nothing really changed substantially um, with matter. Uh, the gravitational field is not special here. Is the existence of the diffeomorphic invariants um, that uh, makes the theory special. So what is special is the theory when the gravitational field is not uh, a, a fixed background, but is a dynamical object. So if you have a young mills field, for, for what happens is simply you have the same uh, 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 abstract graphs with extra quantum numbers, which represent sort of the, 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 the Faraday lines of the uh, young mills field. Now there is a covariant description of the dynamics, which works much better to um, uh, compute things, um, which can be obtained by uh, studying the projector on the kernel of the Willard the width constraint and expanding it in, uh, a, 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 in an appropriate sense. And uh, uh, a la Feynman, like in Feynman thesis, uh, are organizing the terms in terms of sort of histories of uh, spin network. And the result if you, is that you can write the uh, amplitude as uh, sums over. Um, histories of spin network where the amplitude comes from the action of the Hamiltonian constraint on uh, turns out on the uh, 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 on, on a discrete set of points. These histories are what is called spin forms. A spin form is uh, a two complex, so there are, there are uh, surfaces here that meet on uh, edges that in turns meet on, on uh, uh, vertices labeled with uh, uh, spins and intertwiners. And uh, the, the, the action here is in, in the vertices. The, there is an uh, expression for the vertex amplitude, which is I've given here. This is the Wigner 15J symbol. These are some fusion coefficients, some sort of natural SU2 object that come in. And this action here define the, um, thank you, define the uh, 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 dynamics of the theory in the sense in which the, the, the QED vertex defines the dynamics of uh, uh, QED. Now, this formalism here, this covariant formalism, I just summarized here, this is full definition of the theory in the covariant. Uh, so you have a partition function, which is a sum over uh, spin forms. So these two complexes labeled by spin and intertwiners. There is some measure factor and the product of the, over the vertices of the amplitude. The amplitude is written here is a function of the J and the I. This uh, uh, covariant representation of the theory um, can be looked at from a number of different points of view. Um, 
it can be, uh, first of all, you can forget everything I've said coming from the canonical, and you can directly derive it uh, by discretizing the action of general relativity on a lattice. You, you fix a lattice, a, a triangulation, you discretize the theory, uh, you go to the dual, to, to the dual cellular complex, dual to the triangulation, this is what gives the, 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 the two complex, and uh, uh, you, you sort of Fourier transform and you get this, this uh, expression here with this uh, amplitude here. What you don't get from this point of view is the fact that if you do that, that you, start, you, you, do, you work on a, s a fixed uh, 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 two complex, while the expression you get from the, uh, from the coming from the covariant point of view is the sum of all possible two complex. This is what implements fully the, the, the background independence of the theory. Uh, 